no coming back from it. They'll just grab you, they'll pull you down to the ground, and eat your brains, sucker. But not today. No brains for you, except these brains scattered all over the pavement. I guess there's lots of brains. All right, y'all share. Y'all share those brains. So this is good. What's up, everybody? Trombonaut here. We're in Project Zomboid. We're starting a new file and a new video series here. We're just going to hang out and play Zomboid. If you're new to the game, welcome. If you're not new to the game, also welcome. I'm not new to the game uh, in a way. I've been playing for four or 500 hours, but in a way I am new to the game because I haven't played much on this build. 41 stuff. Lots going on since I started. So this video here is going to have some tips and tricks for beginners future videos more tips and tricks as we go through a file together um, but also you might know this already the devs post regular blog posts um, updates and developments for the game we'll talk about old stuff the development of the game the stuff I'm more familiar with we'll also explore the new stuff together get a sense for how the game continues to change and evolve as they head towards the elusive build 1.0 um, so again, this is build 0.41. We're still in development. And uh, let's start a new file. Let's get started with a character in Muldrow, Kentucky. The origin, like the first city of the game. I'm going to try to do something really easy here. New players on the left-hand side, you have your classes. All of these, if you hover over them, will tell you what they give you. I'm going to take unemployed for eight free trade points. Bottom right over here, we see those points. Above that, this is a summary of where our character is at. And above that, is a summary of how did our character get the points down here. So look in the middle now, we got buffs and debuffs, a bunch of traits. Start with the red ones, the debuffs. I'm gonna play a bit of a, a dangerous build here, a bit of a suicide build. I'm gonna take thin skinned, so higher chance for severe injury. Slow healer, so if I get injured, it takes a while to come back from that. I'm gonna take high thirst, uh, because if you run out of water in this game, you've, you've probably got bigger problems than just water. Um, you should always have some water. I'm also going to take prone to illness, which I actually think is a blessing. So this increases the rate at which you turn into a zombie. I love it. If I'm going to turn into a zombie. Hit me. Make me a zombie so I can die and start a new character if I'm into that. I'll also take weak stomach. Makes me sick if I eat bad food. Here's the trick. Don't eat bad food. You'll be fine. Uh, that's giving me 35 points. I'm not a big fan of odd numbers in this game. I'm going to take Sunday Driver to slow me down when driving. That's probably a good thing. I've lost a number of characters to injuries sustained while driving too fast. So those are my debuffs. 36 points to spend. Well, let's start with this. I'm going to make kind of a generalist build. I'm going to be good at nothing to start and good at some things later. Kind of good at everything. Uh, let's start by taking Stout. Gives us more carrying weight and a bit more knockback from melee weapons. Keep some space with the zombies. Let's also take Fast Learner. This is the crux of the generalist approach. This gives us a 30% XP gain on all skills. Beautiful. I'm going to take Brawler um, because we'll talk more about this later, but you just notice I added Axe and Long Blunt to this area down here. Those are combat skills and I have a bonus to learning those skills now. That's in addition to the fast learner bonus. And let's keep looking. I'm going to take sewing, uh, sewer rather, because I do appreciate some good well-sewn armor. We'll talk about armor. It's good to have. Uh, also going to take inconspicuous, less likely to be seen by zombies. And we could take graceful, make less noise when we're moving, but we could also just walk slower. That would do the same. Uh, let's see, we have 10 points left, so let's take a few more player-oriented traits, things that save me time. They don't necessarily help the character on their dice rolls. Uh, we're going to take Dexterous so that I can move items faster. Fast Reader so I'm not reading this whole game. I like taking Cat's Eyes for better vision at night. And that leaves us four points. Let's take a good four-pointer like... Now, Lucky is good on a solo server. But I'm not going to take it because we might not be solo forever. Baseball player. Um, talk about this. If you're playing on a solo build, either solo mode or a server with just you, take Lucky. It improves the spawn chance for good items in areas that you are the first one to enter. But if you're a multiplayer, you might not be the first one to enter. 
uh, a zone and so this trait will not help you so don't take it i won't take it if you haven't seen this look in the bottom left we can save our build let's just call this build one uh save it and then later you can click in here see all of your builds save some time next time we can do the same thing here if you want we're going to build a character here now you can save and load old uh character creations but me i just like hitting the random button until we have somebody who looks kind of funky somebody who looks like a character somebody maybe like rolando jennings look at that man's socks and shorts combo rolando you know what it rolls off the tongue let's roll into rolando Boom. okay so if you haven't played the game all the way through yet surprise there is no all the way through and yet it's very easy to reach all the way through this is the story of how you died once you die congratulations you reach the end game there's a little more to it than that but that's what the devs are going for it is a brutal survivor game it's not an action game it's not necessary necessarily a uh, a game of great conquests and achievements we do exciting things like read good cooking magazine to learn how to make bread dough that's what kind of game this is so we're in the early game now let's talk about some things i think let's talk today about getting a new build on the go that will include talking about character creation which we did that uh, talk about combat you want to get a sense for how your character plays we'll talk more about that in a second i'll explain a little bit more what i'm doing here as well as we go for now i'm just looking for a weapon so we can talk about combat Oh, and a can opener. We're going to talk about food as well. Right now, I'm going to take the can opener. You can kind of think of that as an endless food supply, so make sure you have one of those. Take this frying pan, right-click it, equip primary. Boom, ready for battle, ready for anything. And you know what? If I didn't already have those long socks on, I'd say I need some armor too, but I think those long socks probably all the armor I need. I'm being facetious. Dear Lord, I need a lot more armor than this. All right, we hear our first zombie. You notice I am holding right-click. I entered a combat stance, and I have this little cursor drifting along with my mouse. We'll talk about that as we get closer. Ooh, a garbage bag. I'm going to equip that as my secondary because it's styling. It's also a weight reduction, 10 weight reduction. So if I put things in that bag, they're going to weigh 10% less. We got our first zombie here. We're going to take you to a safe place. We're going to talk about it. First thing I want to show you, look at this. New players, don't freak out. Don't freak out. You can outwalk just about any zombie in the game on default settings. We are in a multiplayer server right now, technically, but I'm the only player here. It's a local server. And um, what that means is uh, some things I have the ability to tweak, but gently I'm on apocalypse settings right now, which is kind of the default uh hard mode i guess you could call it default hard mode in the game i'm also standing on top of this zombie let's talk about what i did i pushed her down i'm standing on her chest she's going nowhere now i've got some options oh before her friend gets here i can press spacebar boom she dead okay that was just lucky um spacebar bring the cursor over to her face press space you stomp if you're not standing over an active zombie you shove instead of stomp now watch this not holding right click i press spacebar i still shove spacebar is your friend spacebar is shove if you do have to pause to shove so be mindful of that you don't want to be running from someone press spacebar now you're stuck and there's a few of them all right buddy come over this way show you something else i like to fight zombies in a horizontal manner that means left or right i find it easier to target i'm gonna try to shove this sucker down we have some benefits from being strong being stout smash his face in again i'm fighting her on the left or the right if i go top or bottom i find that my character or the zombies character model obscures the targeting reticle and so i try not to do that all right left click smash smash i used my weapon that time for the first time good news bad news good news it does more damage bad news weapons can take damage as well they have durability every time you use a weapon you are running a chance of damaging that weapon which is a resource so don't spend resources you don't need to spend don't use weapons in the early game unless you need to because you might not have a lot of weapons on the first go 
All right, I'm checking this corpse. New players, if you go into your world menu, sorry, your world inventory, I think when you start the game, it's like up here somewhere or something, but I like to drag it down at the bottom right. I like to have this little thumbtack displayed. You can toggle it, but with the tack displayed, you can, tack, uh, you can tap off of it and it will close. I like getting it out of the way real quick like that. I do the same with my personal inventory down here on the left. Um, I found a watch in one of these zombie bodies. So this blue tile, that is kind of the surfaces around you. We got nothing. This is zombie one. Okay, she is orange because I'm selecting her. Nothing interesting there. Uh, well, there is it. There is a bloody leather jacket. We'll put that on. We'll talk about armor real quick. It's a combat topic. Hover over it. We see 20 bite defense and 40 scratch defense. That's the short version of what's going on with this jacket. It's a general information. Let's look at the real details. I right clicked it. I hit inspect. It took me here. 20, 40. Okay, most of this matches up. What's this? Ah, the neck. The neck has a hole in it. Zero defense on the neck. So if someone strikes me there, they're going to have a heyday. Okay, and that's we can see it's damaged because the condition is down. We can also see condition by hovering it over here. Always check condition on your armor because if it's low, it's probably not armor enough. Now let's check out this other body though. This is what I wanted. Red digital watch, right click that, wear it on whatever wrist you choose, and boom, top right corner, it's one o'clock, 1300, 1310. Now on July 9th, the first day of the zombie ac apocalypse, as we all know, or as you now know. Love having a watch. Make sure when you have a watch that this bell is not illuminated. If that bell icon is illuminated, you can toggle it on and off. It means that you have an alarm set, and you don't want that. You don't want an alarm? Not at this point, because that's going to bring all the boys to the yard. All the zombies come running, if they hear that. So keep it off, unless you want to come, unless you want to bring them in. Uh, oh, we have another leather jacket. It's about the same condition. We're just going to leave it. Moodles, new players, you've seen these before. Top right hand, just like you're playing The Sims, you have some Moodles going on. And here it says we are thirsty. Now we're also peckish. What can we do for thirsty? Drink some water. Okay, it is a mundane detail that sucks. There is a way to get around it. For example, you know what? I'll do this. I'll take this saucepan, right click here. I will fill this saucepan. I now have a dish of water. Could be a bottle, could be a dish. As long as you have something with water, my character will now drink automatically. Okay, so I don't need to keep constantly drinking. Uh, this milk said it had 10 hunger on it, so I'm just going to drink it all. And I'm doing that because I don't want to carry it around with me for long, so let's just use it up. There we go. It's going to help with thirst as well, of course. And I'm no longer peckish. We had that icon peckish up there. That just means that we're kind of hungry, and it gives us... When, it, when we're hungry, it gives us some increasingly terrible strength debuffs. And you want your strength, obviously, to push and smack the zombies about. You might have also saw we had a little panic moodle up there. Panic reduces your accuracy. I think it also makes you more prone to tripping, falling over. We haven't tripped yet. Let's see if we can trip. Hold shift, run. And when you're running, you are losing endurance. You may become fatigued if you run too much. Fatigue sucks because fatigue also reduces your stats. I'd like him to stay down because I'm trying to prove a point here. I'm now standing on both of these zombies which means neither of these zombies are going to move. Give them a smack, give them a smack, give them a smack. Now, see what I did there? I did some smacking on some zombies. Why did I do that? Press H, open your health here, toggle over to your skills. This is why. I've got a little bit of XP in short blunt now. That's why sometimes, I know I said don't use weapons if you don't got to use weapons, but I'm confident I will find more weapons. And so I'm going to use this weapon to level my blunt skill. So that's a trade-off. The weapon gets damaged, but you get better. Alright, so if you're a new player, combat sucks, okay? You gotta get a sense for what's your shoving like, what's your strength, what's your knockback, how's this gonna go? If you're playing a character that's specializing in blunt weapons, you're going to play a different combat style than someone who's specializing in spears or blades. This door is locked, so I'm going to let him open it for me. Um, so while you're getting used to your new combat setup, just p pick your battles. Pick your battles, choose them wisely. Um, I wouldn't fight more than one zombie at a time if I was a new player. And the reason is you just you want to make sure you're in control of a fight. 
because unlike any number of other zombies, uh, zombie games out there, if you get a single scratch from one of these guys, you get a single bite, you could die, right? That's the difference. This game is not an action combat oriented game. You can certainly spec your character for that kind of uh, play style, but it is not the default, not by a long shot. Oh, metal pipe, baby. Let's do it. So, if you're fighting one at a time, get a sense for the timing, the, uh, the reach of your weapon. Once you're comfortable with that, maybe move on to fighting two zombies at a time. When you're fighting two zombies at a time, get into the habit of when it's safe. Standing on a zombie's corpse. I'll show you this too. Zombies can... If you didn't knock down. Zombies can pin each other as well, I believe. So if you can keep one zombie dancing on top of the downed body of another, it's a good thing. Now, this this is going not terribly. We spawned in a good spot in Muldrow. We spawned very far from the highway. What I mean is we spawned on the east. So kind of like uh, this way. I'll do it again. Uh, this way. Whereas to the, the northwest, which is this way. Do it again. Uh, this way. There's the highway through Muldrow. Lots of shops, lots of stores, lots of storage, lots of restaurants, lots of zombies. So high reward, high success, and we are not there, which means low risk. Uh, low risk, and I think slightly lower reward. But we're in a solo server. There are no other players here. We're the first person, first living person into each of these houses. So they're all got to be stocked with goods, as stocked as can be. On apocalypse settings, stocked means they still won't have a lot, because every different type of item is set to a, to be rare. All loot spawn is set to rare, which means you're going to have a tough time finding the good stuff. Well, one thing I mentioned is keep a can opener with you. When you find canned food, uh, some of it can be opened by itself, such as this one doesn't say anything about using a can opener. But a lot of canned food, you need a excuse me, a can opener to open. So keep that can opener with you. You don't have the carrying capacity. Look over here, 6 out of 15. You don't have the carrying capacity to carry a bunch of heavy food with you. I do have this garbage bag. That's going to help reduce weights by, like we said, hover over it. Reduce uh, by 10, so 10%. percent put this in here too. Saucepan with water. Look at that remaining green bar remaining. It's down a little bit. That's because this guy is sipping as he goes. We can't see it. But he's sipping as he goes. And we have a jacket. Eh. If I let's show you this. When you're looking at armor, hover over it. Defenses are in red. That means it is worse than what I have now. In this case, 10 and 15 worse than what I am wearing now. However, remember, that's the default values. If you've done some tailoring or if your gear has sustained some damage, those values might not be accurate. So if in doubt, you can right-click and inspect for the whole story. Okay, so Rolando, Mr. Jennings, has just found a snazzy, technically a sports car. It is classified as a sports car. I forget what this thing is called. We're going to see if we can get into it. We cannot. We did not find a key in the house. We did not find a key on any zombie bodies. But we're pressing E at the hood. We're seeing this car is actually in very good shape. Very, very good shape for apocalypse mode. Okay. So what can we do? Well, we can check this trash can. Maybe someone left a key here. Nothing. We can go to the left hand here and press this magnifying glass and enable our search mode. This is like foraging mode, now called search mode. And we're walking around and you see that some space has been grayed out. That's because I'm now focusing on the clear space. And if there are items to be found in that space, they'll get a little black pop-up over them, indicating that they are there. This will also spawn some items that you wouldn't be able to see uh, without being in this mode, such as rocks and sticks and bugs and all sorts of things that are useful under the right circumstances. Uh, for right now, I was just hoping to find a key. You can visually see a key as a human player if you got a keen eye. I was just doing this to be safe. I don't see anything, so I can click disable search mode, or I'm not going to do that. I can just run. And there we go. Search mode has cleared. So we didn't find a key for this thing. It's not the end of the world. Make sure you have a weapon equipped, like I do. I have this bloody pipe. Actually, I'm going to hotkey this pipe as well. Equip it on slot one. It's now on my back. And with that weapon out, I'm going to right-click on the car. Kind of just in front of the door. It's a little finicky. There we go. I'm going to smash the front left window. Careful, you just made a bunch of noise. Listen for Zeds. 
you know what, I like to play safe. I like to play a little safer than is necessary. I could rush an inspection of that car. Or I could take out these couple of fans here. Big fans of mine, yes, sorry ladies. Hands off the goods and all that. Okay, she's still going. She does not quit. There we go. Oh, you know what? That's a cool necklace. Yin and Yang, you say. Ah, oh, we can't see it because of my coat, but you know what? We'll see what we look like. So this is great. Uh, if we zoom in, we can almost, almost, almost scroll in if you can. Uh, see the Yin and Yang symbol on my neck now. Hopefully some good luck there. That's something they added, as you can see, all these little things you can put on your character now. I got in the car. You saw that. I now have an inventory for the car. Seat, seat, seat. You can put items on the seats. You might even find items on the seats. I'm not sure about that. But we have the glove box. And if you're super fortunate, you would find a key in here. I'm not super fortunate. There is no key. We look now in the dash. There is no key here in the ignition. We are out of luck, everybody. Rolando Jennings must press on. And uh, let's just... You know what? This area is pretty good. Let's just scream a little and see what happens. What's the worst that can happen? Hey everybody, I'm over here. I'm over here. Come and get me. You all get into this big empty space where I have good line of sight. Oh, okay. Okay, that's going to be a party when they get down here. You are not invited to the party though. Sorry, sister. Alright, party people, come on down. Come on down to Lead Pipe Town. Yes, okay, the music is picked up. There's a bit of a smart music director to this game, I do believe. And now that stuff is happening, the music is happening. Oh, okay. Alright, calm down. There's enough to go around. Oh, we, we, I didn't invite you all. I'm gonna run. Run a little bit. Just get some distance. Again, you want to be in control of a fight. You want to be keeping your space. I'm a, this is a pretty strong character. We took Stout. And yet... If we're not careful, oh ho, if we're not careful, zombies can overrun you, and they don't just damage you, they insta-kill you, okay? No coming back from it. They'll just grab you, they'll pull you down to the ground, and eat your brains, sucker. But not today, no brains for you, except these brains scattered all over the pavement. I guess there's lots of brains. Alright, y'all share. Y'all share those brains. So this is good. This little neighborhood here. A few houses to be looking through and it's relatively safe now you'll see more zombies will wander into the area but i think rolando is just about ready to call it a night it's getting late for him he's getting hungry we're gonna pull over to the side for against some horizontal combat i don't like to go vertical that's how you make silly mistakes she is down she is out and she's got beta blockers. Hello. So as we get panicked fighting more and more zombies, beta blockers will help you keep your cool. Just a little bit of drugs. Keep you cool. Okay. This is a bit of a special house. Seems, what, what are these people watching here? The Omega Department. Global Warrior. Okay. We've got some soldier boys. Probably living in this place. Soldier boys, soldier gals, soldier peoples. But you know what? They've left us a magazine, but not a gun. Check out these pants. Uh, zero defense. 1020 defense. It is neither red nor green, so it's the same as what I have now. Um, so this is just this is just a fashion choice. And you know what? I think Rolando has, has seen the light. Gone are the lackadaisical days of the long socks. This is Rolando, the survivor. Rolando, the fighter. Rolando, the yin yang necklace guy. Toothbrush, don't think you can do anything with that. You notice earlier we picked up some adhesive bandages. We gotta put Rolando to bed. We're getting drowsy. Here's what drowsy does. Look, I spin around. I spin, I spin, I spin. What's happening? The areas behind me go black, right? And it's not just the lighting, it's because I can no longer perceive, actively perceive those areas behind me. So if something changes in those areas, such as a zombie wandering into view, I'm not going to see it unless I turn around and put it in my view. All right, don't forget that. As you get drowsy, that view gets smaller and smaller and smaller until it's gone. I'm actually going to take Rolando home. And this is something you can do, especially as an earlier player. Um, if you get lucky on spawn like this, you can actually just stay home. Look at this. We've got 
and impenetrable. Tall wall. We can hold E to jump the wall. Whoops! Hold E to jump the wall. Zombies cannot destroy that wall. They will try to find a way around it, and right now the zombie pathing is... It's a little... it's a little sketch. Okay, the zombies will find the entrance to your base. Automatically, they don't actually search, they just know, unless they forget about you before they get there. Um, but did you notice when I jumped that tall wall, I had to discard the bag in my left hand, my secondary hand. And the same thing happened there, okay? That was for demonstration, of course, but now we also see something else has happened. Get that bag, Rolando. We are now suffering moderate exertion. We need to take a break, and that's what we're going to do, because this is terrible. Terrible. Reduces your maximum speed, uh, reduces your ability to sprint, that is. I believe it also either limits your weapon attack speed or reduces your weapon damage, one of those two things. So here's what we'll do. We'll put Rolando to bed, we'll show you what that looks like, and then we'll start a new day with a new episode. Let's put him to sleep. Now, because this is not a solo play, a standard solo game, this is technically on a server, a local server, but a server nonetheless, he will not wake up. Ever. Dead. Game over. Don't do it. Just kidding. You can move. He wakes up. Okay? He'll move uh, to wake up. But you have to move him. He won't wake himself up, even if he's completely rested. So you just kind of kind of got to eyeball it. All right? Uh, there are some things we can talk about sleep. We can talk about multiplayer. Uh, we'll talk about the development of this game, where it's been, where it's going. But we're not going to do that today. Rolando's had a hard day. And he's got stuff to do elsewhere. So he'll be back next time. I'll be back next time. Hope to see you next time. If you want to hear some topics, uh, let me know. We're going to take Rolando through to winter. I hope if we can, we'll do him a full year. Winter is kind of like end game one. A year is kind of like end game plus. It's not super uh, rewarding. I find the game is kind of the same after winter. You've basically made it if you survive winter. But we might do a year. We'll see how it goes, see how much we have to talk about. If you want to hear some things, put it in the comments. Like this video if you want to keep seeing more. Dislike this video if you don't want to see it uh, ever again. Get it out of your algorithm. And uh, otherwise, see you next time. Keep your can openers close, and good luck in the end times.